Hi, I'm Stuart, and I look after sales and marketing at InSync Technology. Uh, where to start? So I've been in IT for about 15 years. A long time before that was uh, fiddling with computers and other bits and pieces at home and I really got a passion for IT when sort of probably in my early early teens when I played a lot of computer games and that sort of led me into a passion for technology and a passion for computing. And from there I used to do support in a lot of uh, schools, independent schools, so I did server and desktop support uh, for a long time. Uh, from there I moved into network architecture, network engineering, dealing with a lot of some of the early Wi-Fi controller systems, switching and routing, those typical campus LAN situations. And from there I moved into the Microsoft space. So I used my background in switching, routing, wireless and comms to then uh, focus on unified communications and then now it sort of leads us into the cloud conversation where I guess everything that we're doing nowadays in Microsoft infrastructure requires a solid networking base. So for you, for any customer to leverage and having a great user experience, we need to make sure that the network layer is um, correct. So I've used that passion and, that, and, my, and my knowledge to um, found InSync technology and um, deliver quality outcomes around Microsoft infrastructure and Microsoft productivity services to customers. Look, I really love uh, Skype for Business and Microsoft Teams. It's really, it's really pleasing to go into customers and see them getting benefits out of the productivity suite in Microsoft. And given that we're a productivity and Office 365 focused partner, it's really great to see customers looking at moving away from on-premises infrastructure and getting benefits out of that productivity platform in Office 365. It's really humbling, I guess, to walk into a customer and be able to see the work that we're doing influencing how people go about their business, improving business processes, making the, their staff more efficient, you know, cutting costs through some operational efficiencies of not having to look after on-premises infrastructure and, and those kinds of things. And um, just seeing, you know, building a team here at InSync Technology, it's been really um, humbling and, you know, we're now over 20 staff, started four years ago, and it's really great that we, on a day-to-day -day basis, we're out there making a difference for customers and, and getting the outcomes that they need to, um, to compete in modern-day business. <laughs> I think potentially some of the issues with customers stem from poor experiences with other systems integrators. And so you're, you're going to a customer and instantly they're on the back foot and you know they think you're there for a ride. And you know a lot of customers and a lot of partners like us say, oh, we're not, we're not all about profit and you know we're about outcomes and things like that. But in my experience, you know, sort of the ground is already salted before we get to a, to a lot of customers and they're, they're in the defensive and, and trying not to get you know, taken for a ride. I can honestly say at InSync, like we want customers to use the technology. We want people to be able to have a great user experience with Microsoft products. So that's where a lot of our work stems from is trying to get away from that perception where, you know, we're just there to make a profit and we're just there to, you know, to, to stay on site or work on something as long as humanly possible because that's the most profitable position. And to me, that doesn't build long-term relationships, that doesn't build trust. So we really think of a customer journey as a partnership. So we want long-term customers, we want long-term engagement with people, and we want to see them bearing, you know, using the, the, getting the fruits and getting the productivity out of their Microsoft investments. And that's why we partner with companies like Adopt and Embrace to make sure that we're covering off on the adoption user journey and making sure that, you know, the tech that we're putting in and the tech that we're designing and implementing is actually used in a best practice fashion as well. I'd have to say um, the team that we've got is uh, fantastic. It's the best team I've worked with, and not just only in a technical sense. We don't hire, um, we hire for culture and we hire for attitude, and then we can bring the skills later uh, through training or yeah, mentoring of, of, of other staff. So, you know, what, what gets me up in the morning is I want to come to work, I want to implement cool technology, I want to make a difference to customer outcomes and customer productivity. And that's what we're all focused on here is um, putting the customer first and not you know, ensuring that you know, they have the best experience. It's been actually really interesting to build a business um, from when Nathan and myself started the business. 
coming to work and building these systems and building a business and making sure we're doing business in the most efficient way possible is actually really interesting as well. So uh, the cloud, uh, from our perspective, the cloud has actually made our business a lot more efficient. We have very little overhead in terms of our administrative tasks and we're not, we're not afraid of spending money to make our business more efficient as we go in the future. And I think that that rings true for a lot of customers that we deal with is that Yes, we're going to spend money, but we're spending money to make ourselves more efficient and be able to compete in you know, this modern world um, of business where everything is globalised, it's a lot faster, transactions are a lot quicker, you know, there's, there's commoditization of a lot of elements, and we find if we can make our, our processes and our back end a lot more efficient, that allows us to hire you know, more customer-facing staff that can actually help customers with their environments rather than have you know, workload and, and a headcount tied up with um, people in, you know, in the back of house. So you'll find is that we don't have a large sales team and, and we don't want to have a large sales team. Uh, we want our work to speak for ourselves and we want to be able to uh, put that out into this global modern world of business and win business that way through the quality of our work and um, our understanding of the customer, customer requirements. Oh, I'd have to say teleportation, living about an hour away from the office. Whilst I have productivity tools and, and I do a lot of uh, work from home or mobile work, I do find that um, it would be quite handy to teleport myself between my house and, uh, and the office, that's for sure. Uh, I also wouldn't mind uh, plane, plane travel to be a bit faster. I do quite a bit of travel to the US uh, each year and that's always a bit of a drain. I find myself I'm more productive working from home on, on different elements, but I like, I like having a mix. So yeah, I'd have to say teleportation. <laughs> oh, ha have to be Luke Skywalker, for sure. Why? Look, I think he's, I'm a child, I'm a child of the 80s. Um, so I would have to say Skywalker. I'm a big Star Wars fan, big Star Wars uh, collector of um, Star Wars paraphernalia. I don't think there's really any competition, to be honest. If you've seen Superman three or four, you, how can you? How can I even compete? I'll have to say uh, Microsoft on the desktop and Microsoft from an enterprise computing point of view. But I, I use an iPhone, and I think one of the keys to that, and I think Apple's really led the charge to simplify the user experience. And I think that's actually influenced a lot of the products uh, that are coming down from from those vendors, you know, like Microsoft and Google and and the rest is really trying to simplify that user experience. You know, I don't, I don't. The iPhone's intuitive from a point of view in that I don't have to understand how to use it. It's it's pretty self-explanatory. So I'd have to say, yeah, I'll stay. I'll stay with that. Uh, I'm going to say we, but it's more my wife has two cats, uh, one called Jemima and one called Juniper. So they, yeah, we have uh, two cats. They are, good, good question. As you can tell, it's not high on my priority list. They're, one's a Burmese and one's a Tonkinese. Oh, good question. As you can tell, I've had a fair few good meals in my life. So I would have to say I can't go past mum's roast beef. Uh, I don't get it that often anymore since I moved out of home and got married and had kids and all that sort of stuff. But um, I'm still very fond of mum's mum's roasts. Ooh, I love a bit of um, in and out burger when I'm in the States. Uh, hamburgers are are big on my list, as you can probably tell. So yeah, I'd have to say probably hamburgers from a uh, from a, from a uh, fast food point of view and mum's roast for a sit down meal. Good question. Uh, I think I'd have to say Sarcha, I think the, the, the turnaround that he has made from, uh, from when Bulma was in power um, and some of the, the things that decisions that Bulma made, I think has been miraculous. You know, there's a lot of tech Publishers have said Microsoft's now cool again. If I can invite Sacha and then get Bomber along and then maybe have, I don't know, like a fist fight afterwards, that would be kind of funny. But yeah, I'd have to say Sacha would be um, would be my pick. 
just from the incredible organisational turnaround that he's um, he's been able to achieve and sort of injected a new life and a new vigour into Microsoft that probably wasn't there before. Yeah, I think that would have to be my pick.